Siddharth sir will just join us. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, sorry to keep you all away from the tea. Itna sara bell bajana pada. We will uh, try to wrap up soon unless it's very interesting and you all want us to continue. <laughs> okay. So yes, the session now is of course on understanding the consumer. Uh, so I was just discussing with uh, you know, most of them, you know, before we walked in, you know, myself also being from a digital advertising agency, one of our key pain points is, you know, who's really watching when we go to a client and pitch, uh, you know, OTT, you know, you have to be on OTT now. The whole option, you know, especially from a digital perspective is by, you know, how do I target only women? How do I target only men? How do I target 18 to 25 year olds? And then we say by the content. But you know, that is definitely not enough. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, welcoming uh, Siddharth from Hotstar. Big hand for him. Yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, so, you know, you know, without much uh, further, you know, uh, ado, let's just start, you know, who, who really is watching and I think the key OTT players over here are on this side, you know, uh, if you caught the question, the whole thing was that, you know, uh, if you have to do, you know, advertisement on your platforms, one of the key pain points is, you know, the consumer data is limited, it's as good as TV. So, you know, if we could understand from you who's really watching, uh, uh, you know, uh, and what are they watching on uh, or your platforms other than cricket, uh, you know, um, maybe yourself, Siddharth, and then, you know, Zubin, if you both could just uh, throw some light. Um, okay, this works. Um, so, uh, sorry, I missed the beginning of your question, but it was basically who's watching and what are they watching, right? Uh, no, I think the short answer to that is all of India is watching. Uh, there's nobody who's not watching anymore at this point. But uh, I think the core audience is obviously younger, uh, skews a little more towards male. Um, I think those are the uber demographics, but uh, uh, you know, contrary to what you would think and rather counterintuitively, uh, the viewership across metros, tier ones, tier twos, tier threes, is fast equalizing. I think we are at a point where um, I don't see any skew towards any particular geography uh, at this point. You know, um, I think where we are still underpenetrated is uh, two two segments. I'd say obviously the older demographic, which is 45 plus, uh, women slightly because that is a digital divide that we see in any case in our country, where there are far more men online than women. Uh, and I think uh, lastly, the uh, southern markets, right? Regional penetration, relatively compared to north, central India, it's a little lesser. It has a lot to do with the connectivity to TV also, because in the south, uh, uh, there is far higher penetration of TV within the households. Uh, I think 90% households in the south have TV, whereas like 70 or thereabouts have it in north India and you know other parts of India. So there's far higher engagement with the TV, there's far, far higher penetration of the TV, so therefore we are a little underpenetrated there. It's a journey that everybody's on and I'm sure at some point it will all equalize, right? And in terms of what they are watching, I think uh, uh, OTT Fair started off with like thrillers and the regular crime stories and stuff. Uh, but I think it's fast diversifying into uh, many diverse genres of entertainment, not just, not just one particular, we are, uh, reality is coming on board in fast numbers, there's going to be comedy, there's uh, uh, all different genres, right? Because the audience, maybe the audience that favors thrillers, etc., was the first ones to come on board. But now as the, as the gamut expands and as more and more people come on board, the, the, the content is also following that and, and the gamut of content is also expanding uh, dramatically. I think that's the long answer to your short question. No, thanks. You know, and I remember as a child, I used to wait for those film festival movies in different languages that used to come on those version. And today you can watch a lot of these international movies on OTT, you know, Swedish, or, and the previous channel they were saying, there's talk flicks kind of a thing. Zubin, what about you, you know? So we run a slightly different uh, strategy on OTT. 
uh, we run Shimaru Me, which is our uh, OTT for the family and the entire family together. So, uh, specifically to uh, our entire approach has been more about regionalizing and cohorts that we pick up where we know that there's a strong need and there's a gap and we can fulfill it. One such example is Gujarati. So we've uh, specifically made sure that Gujarati is our forte and Gujarati is something that we want customers to start uh, appreciating the content itself. So our vision on Gujarati is to make every Gujarati fall in love with Gujarati content. Okay. And on that note, we started this journey about a year ago. Uh, to do that, a year ago on B2C, our OTT began about three years back. And uh, in that journey, we said we will offer customers uh, different kinds of uh, varied experiences of content, right from a Gujarati web series and a series of those to Gujarati blockbuster films coming first time on digital on OTT. In fact, the Salman of Gujarat uh, at least about four of his titles are on our platform and so on and so forth and lots of those. So all the big titles, every single title you see will be on the platform. Along with that, uh, Gujaratis are very, very, uh, you know, passionate about Nataks, which is plays and theater. And uh, we've also made sure that that is part of the entire content mix. Having said that, we also, s we also understood this customer and we know what the customer insight is, that the customer insight is one is Gujaratis are tight-fisted. I'm sure many Gujaratis here will agree with me. Uh, they are a bit tight-fisted and they see value for money in everything. And what we said is we want, we want customers to feel that they are getting value for money for the subscription that they are paying for. It's not just we will offer you blockbusters, we will offer you web series and nataks and come for the subscription. No. So what we said is we will promise to them a subscription uh, that gives them one new title every week guaranteed as part of the promise. And now whether it's a web series or a Natak or a blockbuster film, we're doing that. Okay, so we've done that for the last uh, year. It's doing really well. People are picking up. Our renewal rates are really good. And we run an s -word service to, to uh, kind of uh, set that tone. Uh, we use a little bit of a -word, uh, to drive the customers in to, to sample our content and drive them in. But as far as the overall business is concerned, we see more value when customers pay for the content they're watching. Uh, when it comes to profile and to the question you were asking, uh, the larger piece is that uh, Gujaratis are, there's a huge bunch of people who love Gujarati content and any, any so-called brand who wants to get and target that audience uh, this is the ideal base to go and go after, whether it's through inventory, whether it's through uh, in-film, which we do on our web series where we actually shoot and we can actually do in-film inside those. We do a lot of that. We work with over 150 brands across various sectors who actually work with us on each of these things. And uh, that's how the entire thing works. So profiling is, is very, uh, I mean, it's very clear. We're talking to a Gujarati audience, predominantly uh, male, like uh, he said, but uh, we have different kinds of content that cater to, to women as well. So we recently launched a web series called uh, Equi Smoke Tiffin, which is 21st Tiffin, a very nice movie that came on uh, theatrical and then first time on OTT on Shimaru Me. And that was a women-centric film altogether. So we actually targeted women-centric brands and got them on board and so on and so forth. So uh, based on the content, we look at how we can target uh, and drive the right, that's a, right, drive the right TGs to the content that is consuming, and therefore those guys come on board along the along with the brands and the customers. So, so yeah. uh, you know, so how do you, you know, you said you found Gujaratis, you know, adapting to your content, right? You saw a lot of Gujarati content consumption on your platform, and then skewed your entire strategy towards Gujaratis. So, you know, um, likewise, you know, how do you, how did you map that, you know, you will do something for women? Do you then track that? Do you? So, uh, let's put it this way. We, we said first year is all about experimentation. We will try out different formats. So, we said movies, Nataks, web series. Our first web series on Thriller uh, did not really take off. But when we, did, when we did family drama, it took off like a house on fire. So, 
we kept looking at different kinds of genres and formats to come to a formula that we now know that works. And likewise, women was one part of that. So now we know what kind of women-centric content works, and therefore we are now getting sharper. I don't think anyone has a whiteboarding answer to what really works for women or for a certain segment. But I believe that it's only experience that tells you more about how your customers behave. And of course, I think variety, as we all have heard, even in the previous panel, variety, fresh content. Uh, uh, Ishan, what about you? You have uh, uh, your views on this? Yeah. So, Chaya, I represent a very silent clan uh, called the Internet Enablers, right? While I have been hearing these lovely conversations where OTT partners share their lovely insights. Uh, I represent networking and internet enabling services, which actually add a different color to this entire story, right? So let me add my own flavor to who is our Indian user, right? And I would borrow some ideas from where Siddharth left. Right, from a network enabler or internet enabling point of view, our point of view is that we are talking with at least three, if not more, representative user persona when we consider who is a representative OTT user base. The first is a connected or a fulfilled user, internet user and by extension OTT user, for whom Digital connectivity is not a challenge, right? So people like you and me who are in metro cities uh, are privileged enough to get high speed, reliable, available sources of digital connectivity. Consider uh, this to be close to 250, 300 or million Indian. The second part would be the rest of the connected internet like digitally connected Indians, right? Uh, close to 400 odd million users would be our fair guess of users who are internet connected, but I would imagine that uh, the enabling solutions are not at par to realize the complete aspirations of them in terms of media consumption, right? And we feel that there is a huge gap uh, of their ambitions and the lovely content that our partners provide, right? But there is a fundamental thing that we assume as a given, which is not there, which is digital connectivity, right? Consider somebody who is living in a village or not in places which has the, the, the most advanced form of digital connectivity. And the third would be definitely 600, 650 odd million Indians who are not yet connected to internet, right? And what we, what we are firmly like believers around that they are the next points of explosive growth for the entire industry. So Sugarbox in its humble capacity, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to have focused solutions for all these three types of users. And because their aspirations are very different, especially for the second and third, the underconnected and the unconnected Indian who by extension is not able to get a great experience of say a Hotstar or a Shemarumi. We have invented a technology by which we can make digital applications work even without internet connectivity. And that is where our understanding of a OTT user is fastly refining, right? We take many things as given that speed of internet or cost of internet, because we many a times think metro users to be the representative users, but again, aspirations of India are there in different places. I would consider like present one or two stats just for the broader group. India is ranked 120th in terms of mobile speed. Right, uh, when and we unfortunately stand even behind like East African countries or like South Asian countries, which we th would like to think that we are uh, probably way better in terms of uh, state of life. 
and secondly cost while cost is an assumed given in the current infrastructure we don't talk about cost as a barrier for ott consumption right but this scenario is also going to change pretty fast uh, telecom organizations are facing immense pressure for making a sustainable business and as a result some of the factors which are a given for all the ott partners may not be given right so that's why users are having different aspiration and we in our limited understanding are trying to solve this very basic problems for the indian users so that they can be exposed to the brilliant content of hotstars and shimaru music that's that's really a uh, great uh, ishan and you know yes of course there are hinterlands there is uh, the larger india which might not yet have the great bandwidth but uh, you know we already have about 400 then 50 million ott users okay it might be you know primarily uh, youtube but we do have uh, content consumption we've got e-commerce yeah. boom happening over there including tier 2 and tier 3 cities yeah. we have about 100 million plus population of country se jata hai hamara ott base Definitely. Other countries don't even have a hundred million Definitely. population. We are many countries put together OTT population alone. Definitely. So that is also something we need to recognize. Definitely. Okay, but it's great that you know you're going to enable uh, you know reach to a larger audience. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, if anything before we move to that, we are going to talk about even the reach, where the reach growth is going to come from. Any thoughts on you know who's consuming and you know before we move to the next? Yeah, please. uh i think i'm going to take the advantage of being the voice of branded content on this forum right now <laughs> yes please so uh, is a content creator too yes so that. i am a podcaster and a youtube creator all because of pandemic uh, i felt like sharing a part of me and a, and my life being a mindfulness trainer i thought uh i should just keep the camera on one day and see what content comes out and voila <laughs> i was surprised myself and which led to another podcast and another podcast but coming back to the topic uh, i think co content can come from anyone right uh, while we are talking about the platform owners here uh, and the technology but uh, from a branded content perspective a user can like content ideas coming from brands uh, and when it comes to branded content all i can say from ott perspective there is limitation when it comes to fiction content as all we know right uh, branded content in non fiction is the approach the brands are taking uh, from o omnicom media perspective we've had a very good run last year uh, we have created our own ips uh, and in travel music uh, and a uh, couple of more genres which have primarily rested on digital uh one we took to woot uh, which was called skoda sonic roots with amit trivedi and which was basically conceptualized as a travel show uh and I, i think this was gave us huge learnings in terms of what's possible what the users want to watch and what is not possible on ott from branded content perspective but while my ear is on the ground uh meeting the clients and brands literally every day having conversation with marketers i think the demand is lot but we are not able to meet that demand from ott perspective and i'm hoping to see a lot more change in that area thanks thanks so much check no ishan to your point you know you you spoke about both india and bharat right so you know of course there is this uh, you know content story there is also a device story there right i mean we are talking about we are talking about a market which is number 2 in terms of a smartphone uh, you know penetration uh, we are ahead of united states right we are just you know after china so smartphones are you know it's india is a mobile first nation right it's my personal device where i consume my content and this is happening both in bharat and india right the other piece is you talk about the larger screen talk about connected tvs right i mean the connected tvs are the ones that are driving you know uh, tv uh, you know penetration in india um, if my numbers are correct you know we currently sitting at 10 million connected tvs expected to go up four times in the next two years all of this you know points to uh, the indian consumer recognizing you know the importance of of quality content now quality content is something that you know you can deliver from a enhanced audio standpoint or an enhanced video standpoint 
uh, and and that's really the so it's it's the whole ecosystem the, the the content the service that delivers the content and the playback the device when the three sort of come together whether it's in india or bharat uh, it it just you know gives you a seamless experience so just yeah. adding to what he said yeah just one thing i wanted to add just from a you know like a softer point of view on this entire discussion while it's getting very technical that during pandemic i think also we've gone through this entire feeling as a consumer to be much more lenient towards content creators you know we've accepted languages we've accepted what's being served to us and we've agreed to reach, read the subtitles or ex or accept the non hindi uh, movies or series we've accepted quality a little down quality as well if you remember when second wave you know we were just deep into it any kind of content was welcome a content dikh to raha hai something fresh on the library wow <laughs> you know so that was the feeling at that time and i think um, now is the time when we are discussing all this in terms of how to process all of all of this going ahead in future but uh, from a branded content perspective again coming to the point that you know there is a lot more demand out there and i don't know if ott platforms are supplying that demand enough if i break it down into uh, sponsored content or curated content or created content when it comes to created content there is very less branded content happening sponsored content yes curated content yes huge opportunities there huge yeah absolutely and we are hoping that all the ott players out here are listening that there are lots of advertisers who would uh, Uh, like no, no, to uh, do a lot more completely listening i mean we've been doing branded content for a long time now yes uh, i i uh, look i think uh, uh, they it's not that uh, it's not that who wants to turn away money right if somebody is coming and giving you money you're very happy to take it but generally what happens is uh, you know the goals of the what the brand wants and what you know the platform wants and what the content creator wants it becomes very difficult to align them in such a way that you actually produce great quality for the end consumer right so and i'm on i do both right i i market my brand so i'm also a brand marketer but i also look at the business so i want my brand to be front and center in every part of the story i don't want the story i want just the brand right <laughs> yeah and uh, the content creator doesn't want the brand at all yeah. they are like the brand should be in the background and the brand should be an integral part of the story and then the brand owner says that where is my brand i mean it's a part of the story no i wanted to be front and center so it's a at the end it becomes a, you know there they tend to be compromises you know what uh, i'll just add to this what you just said actually the brand owners are they are wanting to be part of the storytelling they don't want the product comms anymore and in fact uh, because we i manage a few uh, global brands at omnicom and they've done enough of content marketing in last uh, one decade they have fine with no logo presence or no product endorsement or placements you know so the ask is more about storyline can we be part of it can we be part of the journey which the user is enjoying yeah no uh, i'm sure lots of brands are now open to you know uh, marketing in a more part in the term but a more sophisticated fashion rather than brand in your face kind of a fashion but uh, i think the problem has also been the unit economics of it right in the sense that today when you produce a good ott show for the audience it takes a lot of money and i think there were content panels before me who would know much more about it and i haven't yet seen a brand willing to put in that much money that it takes to build an ott show actually right and so what you end up building is like not really ott show they are pieces of content but they don't have the scale and the and the you know the rigor that ott ott shows today demand i think so okay fair enough they don't need to pay the whole money they can be a part of the monetization but the problem with that is then the consumer experience gets compromised sure. because then the brand says also put me in the show lock up logo right like triplings by yeah. tata tiago or whatever yeah. I, that's the only example that came to mind yeah. which was beautifully done but the brand was still there and the ott consumer who's subscribing is not okay with things like that they want a very pure experience because they've paid money so this is where i mean that's why there are award models there are sword models um and so that's where you see the clash you know that's why quality content is not coming out uh and that's what i meant by when i said it's a little at cross purposes 
because you, you're making consumers paying subscription for a pure experience. You're putting a brand in front of him, so your experience, your, your conversion declines on that piece of content because they're not getting a clear experience. So then the economics start to fall through. But I think, to your point, I think we've yet to discover that middle ground between a great story and a brand in it. Right. Do you th see it coming this year? Do you see I think, uh, those uh, conversations going with some brands? No, it happens. Every now and then it happens. It just doesn't happen. Uh, that kind of writing quality, that kind of uh, uh, client's understanding isn't there to make it happen on mass basis, right? So it happens every now and then. Like we did, a, we did an amazing branded content show with Quaker Oats, yeah. right? Which was called Kitchen, Khanna and Conversations. And we brought in a chef, a celebrity chef there. And it did fabulously well. But it's very difficult to uh, replicate that kind on a Masi level. You know, even that brief, that brief with the client took like six, eight months to close. Absolutely. So more in non-fiction space, right? Yeah. Less, less yeah. fiction. And yeah, I, that I was non-fiction. And I think this would be an evolution. You know, good ideas would happen. This is going to, you know, definitely, I think, in the future, uh, with more, I, more... I think the problem also content. is brands, you know, uh, brands don't think of it as a media spend. Right? When you think about a media spend, there'll be brands which will come and spend 70, 80, 90 crores on media without blinking an eye. Right? Big brands right now. Or, or new age brands, right? Uh, but when you ask them to put more than 10 crores on a piece of content for brand, no, that's, that's very difficult. And you know, hardly any good story nowadays gets created below 15, 20 crores, is my sense. So I, I think that's where the economics kind of yeah, yes. you know, just because of this, I think great uh, storytelling from the brand side is happening more in digital. Just because of the space and the breathing space the brand gets. Uh, and not intrusive, it's very subtle. Very subtle. I think also uh, looking at this entire content piece and branded content, etc. brings us to the, uh, you know, the other aspect about the quality of content. Uh, like we were discussing earlier, we also have content creators dominating uh, across the web and there's the quality of content so you have the bottom of the spectrum in terms of quality of content where somebody is just shot anywhere in the garage on the street and there are people sharing it everywhere uh, and on the other end you have high quality content uh, which is going to actually give you those eyeballs and retainer uh, you know subscriptions etc uh, Sameer do you want to throw some light on because sure. being yeah, from Dalti and you've done the score creating with several uh, players Last year, you did a campaign around that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so, you know, to, to your earlier comment, you know, about uh, the pandemic, uh, letting consumers settle for whatever, you know, is available. I'll, let me give a counter view to that. Uh, it, you know, backed by consumer insights. So these are consumer insights that, you know, we picked up. There was a, uh, you know, a four country uh, study done by Wakefield, uh, which points to, uh, in the Indian context, points to Indian consumers doing a two pronged upgrade during the pandemic. Uh, more time, uh, you want the best possible experience. And those upgrades are actually happening, one, uh, from a premium survey. You know, so 94% uh, uh, you know, respondents in that survey, 2,000 plus surveys, seven cities in India, pointed out to uh, Indian consumers' 94% will willingness to uh, subscribe to a premium service provided it delivers an enhanced experience. Now, whether it's an enhanced audio experience or a video experience. The second upgrade that the Indian consumer is willing to uh, you know, do is to upgrade his device. Something that I have been uh, you know, snacking in and snacking out uh, in the non-pandemic days, now I am totally dedicated. I want a seamless experience across devices, and I don't mind upgrading my device, provided uh, the device comes with the latest technology that gives me a better experience. So it, this is not just the AV content, even on the audio narrative side, because that's another streaming aspect of you know, uh, content that we look at. Uh, there was a Kantar study done uh, recently with uh, uh, music uh, you know, listeners in India. Uh, nine out of 10 music listeners who are act heavy music listeners pointed out to their willingness to subscribe to a premium service, provided it gives them more, more quality. And quality is defined as something that gives you more clarity Gives you more depth, gives you more detail. So, you know, so at so 1.3 billion population. <laughs> Everybody, there's enough content and type of content, quality of content for everyone. Right. Absolutely. And, and, and to, to, to Chaya's question, you know, uh, from a branded content perspective, yes, there are opportunities to co create. So, we've, uh, at Dolby, we've, uh, you know, co created a property with NDTV Gadgets 360. 
uh, you know, talking about how do you, how do Indian consumers uh, get a, a premium experience. So it's a how to 101 kind of series, which talks about how to get the best experience on your smartphone, uh, how to get the best streaming experience, uh, which is uh, seamless across screen types. So you know, day in the life of a consumer, morning I walk out on a, on my smartphone, start consuming something, when enter work, uh, switch my consumption to a desktop. Uh, back home, I'm on the big TV. So how? Can streaming services give you a seamless experience across screen types and, and so on and so forth? You know, uh, could you share your own experience on this high quality content, you know, where the production value is very high, vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, low production value content? How is the consumer behavior? Uh, I mean, everything has a place. Firstly, everything has a place today in the Indian ecosystem. Uh, it doesn't matter high quality. Everybody has its sensibilities, their its own set of consumers. Uh, obviously, the higher quality, the more likelihood, the more propensity a consumer has to pay for it, right? And shorter formats, uh, uh, content, uh, creator democratization, um, all of them play a role in bringing people onto digital video, right? So, uh, YouTube pretty much shapes digital video behavior today. If you think about it, people come online, the first place, to be honest, the first place they see a digital video is mostly YouTube, right? And they learn things there, they catch on to things there. Um, I think their, their sensibilities start getting shaped there. And then they graduate to better quality and better quality and start to eventually, you know, maybe pay for the content. So I, I think it exists in all shapes and sizes today. I think everything has a role. In fact, what we call low production quality, you know, the snacky videos, a lot of brands come and partner for those, right? And influencer, the whole influencer ecosystem is, is thriving on all of that stuff, right? So. There is a economics there also, there is a viewership there also, there's a viewership at the higher end also. And I think to, uh, you know, Shelja's point, I think very, very valid point that because of the pandemic, uh, we were open to watching a lot of content as long as it was fresh. Stuff we would not have watched two years ago in our regular lives, right? So I don't remember, but I think, I don't know when the KGF part one came out or maybe it was at the beginning or whatever. But it kind of, a lot of people started watching it in Hindi, right? And then when Pushpa came, we were so, I, I'm not saying that in any way has driven the success, but I think people wanted to try something new. Uh, and there was some content, it was out in the theater, they went, they saw it, there was a great effort done to dub it in Hindi, the songs and everything. They saw it, they loved it, uh, word of mouth spread, and slowly the perception gets broken that good content can only be in your language. So. Just to add to this, right, because when you just uh, touched upon a little bit of creator uh, economy growth, which happened at the same time during pandemic, with the launch of plethora of short video apps, uh, uh, you know, I think back in 2020, uh, I think that's the switch when the consumer became the creator, right? Uh, the technology gave that leverage to the consumer to start creating content. And the studio inside a short video app, which has a filter, it has music inside, you know, you can upload your content, you can show your creativity. That's the time you realize also when you're watching that content, hey, you know, quality doesn't matter. As long as I'm getting entertained, I'm watching something which is, which is nice and funny and, you know, it just kind of relaxes me. And that was the entire shift which happened and which also had an uh, impact on the other platforms and formats. And well, I mean, data is great, but <laughs> I think I'm a very insight and, you know, just no, looking think, at life person. I think like, uh, you know, uh, Siddhartha definitely said that uh, you do have demand for both, for sure. This is India and Bharat. And, and he also specified, and I'm sure you're going to pay a premium for premium content. Yeah. And, and, and there are products also, so it's not, so, you know, for example, uh, we launched an app during the pandemic called the, the Dolby On app. This was for, you know, creators. If you have a, a piece of inspiration that you want to share with your audience, you can actually record it using the app. It does the Dolby magic and you go live. You can even go live, uh, you know, on, on Facebook and other platforms. We, in fact, uh, uh, you know, engage with a lot of artists doing that. So they use, so, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a mix of both, you know, it's, it's definitely India and Bharat. You want to add your uh, experience? Yeah, so uh, we've done some very interesting stuff with a few brands, but specifically in regional pockets where we picked up, uh, you know, I mean, there are brands who've come to us because we are so, so prominent in that particular region. They've come to us and said, it could just be a Mithai store. And he's saying, Mujhe aapke content mein kaise 
weave kare ya story banaye wo bataiye and literally to your point shailaja we've actually created we're now in the process of actually getting writer brand ott player all in one room and saying okay let's let's figure out what each one's wish list is and based on that wish list we'll come to a common denominator and say okay now all are happy we'll make a story based on this piece and that's what we are headed to so you're bang on in that uh, in that insight great thanks ishan uh, you know you've been going to those uh, you know the bharat the larger so you know uh, what is uh, the consumer looking for you mentioned that they're looking for native content is that would that be a right understanding sure uh, actually i want to come back to the earlier question and add my insight about what is the audience choice of uh, lower quality versus higher quality event, right and i am giving you a bharat ka point of view again it is very interesting when some of the barriers are removed people start behaving very differently i am citing an instance of a remote village in maharashtra called pathetan where we basically introduced our infrastructure as a result the rural audience were able to watch content without any barriers of cost or connectivity they were getting equivalent to 4g 5g content and that too without having to pay money so essentially we remove the barriers that are there when a person makes a choice between a low quality and a high quality and very interestingly chaya most of the villagers and we were pleasantly surprised after seeing that they chose the highest format of video highest resolution of video they were willing to like experiment with different high quality content format just because the barriers were removed right so a, a very interesting conversation and i was uh, loving to hear that part the only aspect is that it is functional to the current environment if the environmental barriers are removed i actually tend to agree with sami that people are voracious for high quality content whether it is data or whether it is content different parts of uh, different elements of content consumption i think also maybe there was a novelty in getting good content for them and then you know you obviously will choose the most you know the highest uh, common definitely and they are also equally uh, erudite of an audience to understand the differences between uh, yeah. mediocre quality it is probably just that they were constrained by some other barriers just to add to that i think good quality content is going to be costly like sid said and there's no way you will make money from the advertiser you have to make money from the consumer that's where sword comes in uh mediocre content which is great value in terms of entertainment value can be sponsored by the advertiser and funded by the advertiser it will still mitigate costs it will not recover costs but i think that's best of both worlds subscription is uh, is what is going to drive the growth no i i won't say that i think the most successful businesses will be able to bring in brands subscription okay. um as well as build i i i see a future you know on award reach is what sells and that's what brands come in for that's the tv model right mm. but i think i see a future where you will have people subscribing you will have massive reach on those subscriptions and you will be able to because of these two things you will be able to build build content that has brands woven in talks about brand integration but also is very very uh separately or with it is very high quality and uh, possibly it's a little too early even now because we are still not as penetrated uh no i i don't think it's a little too early now okay. i mean uh, at hotstar we already have scale even in our subscriptions okay and even our subscription uh, platform base is good enough for advertisers today okay so uh, but again i think we are just scratching the surface okay. i i think over the next two years there will be another 50 at least a 50 odd million people added into the subscription yes. ecosystem yes so yeah uh, what i meant more from early is that there is a lot of room to do a lot more uh, today definitely you know, so therefore where the revenues are really coming from maybe you know we will see different kind of formats maybe newer avenues uh, than I, what i think models will evolve yes. for sure right yeah. there are so many economies at play here there's the creator economy at play there's the influencer economy at play there's a subscription Uh, economy at play there's a brands or an award yeah. economy at yeah. play uh, there's gaming along with that there's interactivity along with that 
I don't even, it's, we don't know what we don't know. I don't even know what the future models, commercials will look like. Uh, but today, yeah, we do see AWOD, SWOD uh, brands maybe at a certain point in a certain offering even coming together, along with also existing as pure play yeah. uh, offerings. So uh, something else that we do with brands is that uh, it's slightly reverse. So we actually go and understand what their requirements are and what their objectives are. And in line with their objectives, we see how Shimaru Me can play a role in that journey. And then there are many times when, when brands say, we want to acquire some of your subscriptions in bulk. And that's where B2B comes in. Some guys say, we want to integrate your app into our app so that we increase engagement. So that's where engagement and B2B again comes in. So there are lots of different models, as it was saying. And uh, there's, I mean, we haven't even scratched the surface as far as monetization is concerned. So we still have a long party to go. So, right. Zubin, you know, uh, where do you see the future growth coming from? You know, uh, we did speak about, you know, nine, about 100 million paid subscriptions today, but 450 OTT users. Where do you see the future growth coming from? Do you think metros are sort of So, I think there's, there's extreme competition. I wouldn't say competition, but there's too much supply of content in the Hindi space. Uh, whether it's web series uh, across dime a dozen in different genres. But uh, the real uh, magic is going to come from that same scale being done at every regional pocket. So if there are, uh, I mean, regional has not even scratched the surface. We've just kind of, you know, touched it right now. Uh, uh, there are few players who are doing regional. Uh, Gujarati is what we are doing. We also do a lot of Bollywood, which is our regular Bollywood uh, catalog. So the entire Bollywood catalog, about 5,000 films, is on the platform. But more importantly, the, uh, the regional pocket is where things are actually going to explode uh, as time, as time uh, goes on. And uh, we have to penetrate beyond the 100. If you want to get to the next 500 million, you'll need to look at uh, regional as the only way. That, uh, would you agree? Uh, are you, do you share the same thoughts? Um, I mean, it depends on what cut you want to take. Uh, regional is one cut, which is more a language affinity. Mm. So if you look at it from a language affinity, yes, uh, I already, when I started, I said that we are underpenetrated in the regional audiences, right, relatively, and TV is much stronger there versus what happens in the Hindi ecosystem, HSM, as we call it, Hindi-speaking markets, right? And so definitely that is a space for growth. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there are seven, eight hundred million viewers on TV of Hindi entertainment, uh, sorry, of overall entertainment. There are maybe, if you leave out YouTube, there are maybe 200 million people on premium uh, OTT entertainment, right? So there's still headroom for 600 million people more who love entertainment to come on to OTT. Now, they can come across regions, uh, but I think there's a big job as well, if you look at the other cut of it, which is uh, geographically, right? There's tier one cities, there's tier two cities, there is what we know, what we refer to as Bharat, uh, you know, which is tier three and below. Uh, I think huge job, uh, all these places. And I think if you look at the audience sizes, of course, Bharat is the largest audience size that is still to be explored, and tier one and tier two, but then you have to balance it with affinity uh, and propensity to pay and affordability, right? So. I think at the end of the day, it's, it's a cross play between those three or four things. And it depends on what, how you want to position yourself, what you want to sell, and what is your proposition. Uh, but I think all of these markets have great uh, uh, potential. Metro, of course, metros are the most saturated markets. So maybe the headway there might be lesser. But tier one, tier two, tier three, below, I think ma uh, massive headway. And then if you go into languages on those tier one, tier two, tier threes, even more headway. So I think that's Thank, thanks so much. I'm getting all kinds of signals that I'm going to... Yes, get. that's I've also been sent here to say that we are slaughtered. out of time. Uh, slaughtered. But you weren't looking here, ma'am. You're only looking there. I kept waiting. I'm going to ask you something, then you'll see me. She did, and then of course I got carried away. <laughs> okay, so we have to close now. So I don't think any questions started. Can we have... Any, everybody have one last word if they have any uh, Ten seconds per person. Ten seconds per person. Precisely ten. Hello, hi. Uh, I'm passing. I'll save those 10 seconds. <laughs> Sir, my budget only allows that much. I'll try okay. and do it in 10 seconds. So, you know, as long as... Okay, perfect. So, as, as far as, uh, you know, uh, 
so businesses you know as long as they're looking at uh, their subscribers as as consumers and not customers and giving them cushed you know which is basically giving ease of use you know imagine a integrated uh, you know a single remote that gives me both linear and non linear content as a consumer so i'm not you know it's not a cushed you're not giving me cushed right i'm i'm you're treating me as a consumer plus the whole integrated uh, you know uh, interface uh, example being you know fire tv's uh, you know uh, uh, ease of uh, discovery of content xiaomi does a, a very interesting patch wall you know which aggregates uh, you know content you know there are different carousals so it's as long as you're thinking consumer uh, and 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 reducing the cost i think to me that will drive growth okay just one last point uh, nobody and nobody is cracked that code nobody is platform loyal we are all content loyal so if there's content today on a particular platform we'll jump there if there's another piece of content on another platform we will jump there as well and we will watch it we will pay for it this is consumer behavior and uh, till we don't crack the code of how to make customers loyal on the platform uh, we've tried to do that with our 52 week uh, prom promise of premieres but till we don't crack that code i think we'll all be trying to find that uh, subscription hack On that note, download Shimaru Me. You won't be disappointed. Yes, Shimaru Hotstar. Watch her content online. Uh, Use Dolby. Watch And all the content online. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, everyone. No, watch all the content online. Oh, yes, watch content online. OTT, OTT. Yes. Okay, any, thank you so much, everyone, questions? for your patient I, listening. No questions.